Hello everybody, it's Tim here again. Here another movie review, this time for M. Night Shyamalan's Trapped. Or just Trap. <laughs> as far as M. Night Shyamalan goes, I'll go ahead and say it. I guess I am a fan of his work. Uh, he is more of a hit or miss director now. But uh, I would say overall I am a fan of his. Uh, I liked uh, Sixth Sense a lot. I liked Unbreakable a lot. I liked Signs, despite the plot hole of the aliens and water or whatever. But I liked it. Um... The Village, it was alright. The twist at the end is kind of stupid. Uh, Split, I really liked. Uh, the Visit, I liked. I thought it was like alright to decent for what it was. Horror comedy. Beef like. Um, old, I know a lot of people didn't like that one. I walked away thinking, nah, it's alright. It's kind of like an extended Twilight Zone episode. Uh, Knock at the Cabin or whatever with Batista, I actually really liked. I thought that was good. Um, Glass, I know is divisive for people, but overall, I, I would say I liked that one too. Even though the ending was somewhat anticlimactic, I would say overall, I liked it. Um, other ones, The Last Airbender, that did suck. Uh, After Earth, that also sucked. Um, what was the other one? Happening sucked as well, but it's a fun suck. I mean, come on. That is so bad, it is a good movie, clearly. Um, other than that, this movie, where does it fall? Oh yeah, and Lady in the Water wasn't very good either. This movie, where does it fall? A uh, Trap is meh. I don't like it. I'd give it a low 2 out of 4. Uh, it's a passable watch. I would never watch this again, really. Or wouldn't want to. Unless I was having like an M. Night Marathon. Um, thumbs up or thumbs down? It would be a thumbs down. Uh, Josh, uh, Josh Hartnett does a good job in the film, acting-wise. But his performance is cartoony and over-the-top at times. But he does do it. He, he is the most fun part of the film, easily. And it is a good performance for what he's being asked to do by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, but it is an over-the-top performance and cartoony. Uh, but it is fun. <clears throat> Overall, pretty much the film is about... You've seen it in the trailers. It's about Josh Hartnett, who is a serial killer called The Butcher. He's at this concert with this chick named Lady Raven, who's actually Matt Shyamalan's daughter. He's there to see her. Uh, take his daughter... Take his daughter to see her. Um, and uh, he's actually a serial killer, and you find out in the beginning of the movie that he is. And the whole thing is actually a sting operation where he's uh, they're setting it up at this concert to like try to trap the butcher there to catch him, which they would never do in real life because they'd put way too many civilians at risk. Wouldn't happen. Um, so they're trying to basically catch him because of that. And I do like the scene where he's like noticing all the cops and everything around all that. And he's noticing, you know, things seem kind of suspicious. So he's going and like talking to one of the security guards who he's trying to get a shirt for of Lady Raven for his daughter or whatever. And he's talking to like a security dude there and he's like, hey man, uh, okay, I kind of what's going on here. And the dude's like, well, I'm not supposed to say this, but let me tell you. And I actually did like that because that is like something you would probably happen in real life from like a, a just a goofball security guard would be like, well, I will I will tell you what's going on, but don't tell anybody, man, because I don't want to lose my job. And for some of this movie, it did feel like in that Shyamalan was treating it as like a comedic B movie almost at certain points, but it doesn't push itself far enough through most of the movie. And at points when it does do that, it is kind of funny. Like the way Josh Hartnett plays it, this is a flaw with the movie. Uh, amongst other flaws, but the way Josh Hartnett plays it is he's playing it like a guy who is crazy. You know, he is crazy as a serial killer, but he's somebody who's crazy who is trying to fake being normal. But at the same time, Josh Hartnett's playing it to where uh, he has little twitches and little signs or whatever and movements with his body to show that he actually is crazy. That's the way Josh Hartnett is playing it. Like, he'd be like, oh, I won't, I won't tell anybody, man. <laughs> like, like that right there. He gives off those little facial gestures to show that I am actually crazy and I'm pretending to not be crazy. But that hurts the movie somewhat. For most of the movie, it's still, and it, it is an entertaining performance because of that, but it hurts the movie somewhat because throughout the movie, they're trying to give this idea that the butcher is this smart, intelligent killer. Uh, from the way he's being profiled by the profiler person for the FBI, who we hear talking about him. But it doesn't come off that way. Like, anybody could talk to Josh Hartnett and see that he's clearly... Like, if you talk to him for more than just a little while, you could see clearly that this this guy is... He's messed up in the head. Like, you can tell from the way he acts. So, uh, this is like a serial killer who is insane and who is trying to pretend to be normal. It's not one of those serial killers who's insane, but insane in like a super smart genius way, like Hannibal Lecter, who can just blend in, you know, and fake it. This guy can't. Uh, he, he can try, but he wouldn't He wouldn't pass, no. So that is a flaw with the movie. The other flaw, of course, is the writing. In that Shyamalan, in the script, he deliberately writes stuff to be, to make certain characters stupid in order to make the things that Josh Hartnett does uh, just happen in the movie. 
like there's moments clearly where Josh Hartnett's character is like uh, just walking through FBI people or whatever, and he's like lied that his daughter just got over like leukemia or some shit, so he can get uh, backstage to meet Lady Raven. And uh, the FBI is there, and they stop him. And they're like, "Hey, maybe we should uh, stop you and frisk you and find out your name and everything." And then uh, the, the security guy who's like with Josh Hartnett, he's like, he's like, "No, no, no, they're, they're with us." And he like tells him about the guy's daughter having leukemia and all that. Like, and so they just let him by. That wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. FBI agents are trained specifically to ask everything and to go strictly by the book. And if they don't and their boss finds out about it later, they're fired or they're reprimanded incredibly harshly. Uh, so, no, that would not happen. They would have stopped him then and there. There are multiple times in this movie where stuff that Josh Hartnett does he would not get away with. Um, like there's, sequen there's a sequence in the movie where he goes and sneaks, he puts on like a... He steals the, the security guy, uh, one of the security guys, like, card keys so he can get back here to, like, check out the cops and everything and the FBI, and he's back there, and he just, like, walks behind him and swaps an earpiece and a walkie-talkie so he can listen in to what the FBI are talking about and everything and what they're doing. Like, automatically, if anything went missing from uh, an assignment like this, the FBI would automatically put it out as a precaution that the killer could be listening in, and they would go by what the profiler was talking about. And the profiler would also assume that the killer would be listening in. So they would automatically just, like, they wouldn't be talking about their plans or anything on the radio thing. And they would they would uh, tell each other that, first of all, that the killer could be listening in. Like, they would not, they would not just keep talking casually. They wouldn't. So, yeah, the automatically a flaw in the movie. I did get a laugh when this person was, like, drunk or whatever, and Josh Hartnett just kind of walks over and, like, knocks him down so he can get the police distracted or whatever so he can make his way to another part of the building. I thought that was kind of funny. And, of course, he keeps trying to, like, find a way out of the place and everything. And uh, I will say this. The movie, the part, the main problem with, like, the first half of this movie, other than some dumb character things just done specifically so the Josh Hartnett character can do what he does in certain situations, other than that, the main problem here is it's just kind of there. Like, they don't really put Josh Hartnett's character in a lot of tense situations to where it would be, like, really interesting to, like, see him, you know, try to maneuver his way out of and stuff like that. It's just mostly just him walking back and forth and watching the concert with his daughter. M. Night Shyamalan's daughter plays the, the Lady Raven chick or whatever who's singing. Her singing is good. And I know it's the whole nepotism thing that he put his daughter in there. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but uh, as far as she goes, her singing is... If you hear a dog barking in the background, I'm sorry. That's just house dog. But, uh, yeah, her singing is fine. It's good. Um, her acting, when she becomes more of a part of the movie, when she's trying to act more and give more performance, it goes from, like, fine to just, like, bad to okay. Overall, she's okay, performance acting-wise, um, for what she's supposed to be as, like, a... Um, as like a singer type character, but it isn't. It isn't. It isn't so much. It isn't a good performance. I'll just say that. But it's serviceable uh, for for this movie. Uh, and so Josh Hartnett has to eventually basically like kidnap her because he shows her the dude he's got held hostage on his phone, and that he'll press this button on his phone that release some nitrous oxide that basically killed the dude. And so he has he forces her to like take him out of there, which I don't totally buy that she would just take him out of there. I think most people in that situation would be like, "Hey FBI, killer, 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 right here, right here." Uh, I think that's what mostly would happen in that situation. But he she does take him out of there in the limousine or everything, and you get a sequence where um, Josh Hartnett is like in the limousine with her, and he's like, "You can just drop me and my daughter off right here." And I don't get that. Like I don't get that because. She, she knows what he looks like, and so she can tell the people there at the concert and everything, you know, who it is, basically, what he looks like, and they'll know his name. So he can't let her live. That doesn't make any sense because she knows who he is. He would have to kill her. So I don't get that at all. Like, if she would have just let him out, she still could have just went and got the cops, and they would have just came there and blew the guy away or arrested him. And they definitely wouldn't have been able to... to maybe he would have just ran off, but they still would have been tracking after him. He would have been outed. <clears throat> he would have been on the run. So, uh, but she says to, like, go to his house. She gets there, and she's, uh, snatches the phone out of his hand or whatever, runs into the bathroom, and she, um, talks to her fans about anybody who might live around that vicinity to go rescue the guy. I did like it that she got the guy rescued. That was fine. That was good. And, but, uh, Josh Hartner's there, like, trying to, like, get her to open the door, like, casually or whatever, but he's still, like, faking in front of his family at trying to, that he's not, you know, insane or the killer or whatever. I don't totally buy that. I think at this point he'd probably just lose his temper, knock the door down, and grab the phone. But he doesn't. It's just, it is weird in that way that he, he doesn't. It's kind of stupid. But, uh, and so she manages to get a hold of the police. 
Um, the police show up. He's like getting ready to drive off with her or whatever in his car. I guess he wants to kill her and then kill himself, I suppose. But uh, the police are basically there. And so she gets out of the car, takes off. He goes back in. And uh, he escapes to this tunnel he had. But he also coincidentally had a SWAT uniform there where he can like blend in with the FBI and the cops. And he's the one that comes out and gets in the vehicle and like drives Lady Raven off. That doesn't make any sense that he would just coincidentally have a SWAT outfit just in case of a situation like this. That is extremely coincidental. Um, so he gets out of there, <coughs> and then you get, like, this horrible scene where he's, like, uh, or horrible, I'll get to it. He's in the limousine or whatever with her, and he's got her handcuffed to the bar and connected to the limousine. She manages to get herself free because of, and show herself to a bunch of her fans, and she gets out of the vehicle. The police show up there, and this movie could end at, like, three different points. It could have ended back at the house, where it could have just been a standoff where Lady Raven manages to, like, stab Josh Hart, and then the police blow him away or whatever. Uh, you could have done that, and then they get a second possible ending here where josh hartnett is left in the car or whatever the limousine and the police are there and he they could just show up and he could just get out and he could just, just commit suicide by cop it could easily just end here but no he somehow just teleports directly out of the vehicle into the crowd and you see a scene in, inside the limousine where he looks over sees some clothes or whatever uh and he teleports out of the car like nobody sees him get out it's like a a blink of an eye it makes no sense and he's just in the middle of the crowd wearing uh, a co uh an outfit that he like found in the vehicle or whatever it makes no sense um and so he just gets away there and it's almost like comedic it's stupid um like if this movie played itself up for laughs more about how the killer just keeps getting out of impossible situations it would be funnier and on stronger footing i think and so he's getting out of there and then he goes and pretty much tracks down his wife who we find out was actually the one that planted the, the the Lady Raven tickets or whatever at uh, one of his crime scenes because she suspected that he was the butcher. And so she planted the tickets there so the police would find it and investigate him. And I get if he wasn't the killer, you know, I guess they wouldn't do anything. Which is kind of stupid because if she expected he's the killer or suspected it and her with children, you would think she would just automatically call the police on him and have him like show up there and, and they would just investigate him like that. So it really makes no sense, really. And it just kind of feels like it's there just to have a yet another twist. Um, but he's there talking to his wife, and then he eats a piece of pie because his wife offers it to him. And that's what I'm saying. Like, he comes off kind of dumb and crazy as a character. He doesn't come off as, like, a mastermind serial killer. So he eats this pie, and obviously it's drugged, and he passes out and gets ready to pass out. He thinks he sees his mom, who he, like, always wanted to, like, went over i guess when he was a kid and that's one of the things he's psychologically profiled with for that he had problems with his mom so he goes like torturing and from the find out it's actually the police and they shoot him with tasers like two or three times and he manages to like knock one of the police people down or whatever fbi agents and starts like putting his thumbs in their eyes and you think it's gonna be bloody but you really don't see anything and uh, i'm not even sure if the guy died um i don't think he did and then he gets tased again by the old fbi lady or whatever which really if he got shocked in the back by these hardcore tasers like no matter how strong he may be two of those he's going down and josh hartnett does do a good job he does seem like intimidating as the killer here but at the same time it's not totally believable that he would take like th three tasers to go down it's not like mul that many multiple shots but um he does go down and so they arrest him they're taking him out and then he like leans over to like his kid's bike and lifts it up and um you uh, you think it's like his ocd but they take him out to the vehicle which yeah, they probably would have, like, patted him down after he got to the bike or whatever, but I can kind of let that go. It's a movie. So they put him in the back of the police vehicle, and they're taking him off to jail. And um, you see that he actually did, like, steal, like, a little piece of a spoke or whatever, or one of the little metal wires that's in the bike wheel, which that would really be hard to do, like, bending down there like that and do that without anybody seeing it. It's like the movie wants him to come off insane in certain points, like oh, it, like to the point where he's like Looney Tunes, to where it wouldn't, it's not believable at all it could ever blend in. And then at the same time, it wants him to be this mastermind killer to where he can do these things without anybody noticing. And it's, it's not really believable. Like, there's no way he could have gotten that little piece of the bike like that that quick without anybody noticing, unless he had it planned for, like, years uh, in case this situation ever happened, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and so he... Um, Gets in the back of the vehicle and they're hauling him off and there's like multiple car police cars fbi cars like around the truck and plus the guys in the front of the truck that are taking him 
and he can't like reach back there and like strangle him to death or anything because you know there's a wall there and like so he like takes out the little wire or whatever and picks his cuffs and he's like sitting there laughing like looking at the camera laughing and uh, it is kind of funny and then uh it cuts off there and i'm like hey, like what does that matter like okay I get it's supposed to be like a joke that, you know, they like finally got him or whatever. Now he's rescued himself or took himself out of the handcuffs. So it's like, well, maybe he'll get away. But it's like, how would he get away? There's like multiple police cars around him plus the two guys in front. And when they take him to like the prison or whatever, wherever they're going, there's going to be like five or six armed FBI agents with guns when he gets out of that vehicle. So even if he gets out, and, like, is Eureka free from the handcuffs and, like, maybe grabs a guard and kills one or two or whatever or takes one hostage, they're not going to let him go. There's going to be so many guards there, and they're all going to have high-powered weapons pointed at him. Hostage or not, they're not going to let him go. Um, he might, even like, if he threw one guy down and took off running, they'd shoot him, like, in the legs or in the back or whatever. They would blow his ass away. Uh, and if he, like, took a guy hostage or whatever, they still wouldn't let him go. They would not stand down. It would be a standoff, and they would call in, like, some sniper dudes and blow him in the head. But I guess it's just supposed to be funny of, like, well, maybe he could get away again. But it really does. It really, it would really be almost next to impossible for him to get out of that. Unless he somehow, like, took the bottom of the vehicle out or whatever, I guess, and, like, went out from under the truck somehow, which would just be ludicrous. But this is one of those types of movies where it is just pretty silly. So, but that's part of the problem with the movie is it plays itself kind of silly at times, but other times it wants you to take this shit, like, really seriously. And it's just, like, a really ridiculous, like, plot, the way it's done in certain areas, or the way it's executed, I mean, to the point where you can't really take it seriously. Like I said, Josh Harden's the best part of the movie. The little girl who plays his daughter, she does a good job. Josh Hartnett does a good job in the movie uh, for what he's supposed to be, but at the same time, his performance is cartoony at times, and it is over the top, but it's entertaining. Um... Overall, this is a low two-star flick. I wouldn't watch this again, and I wouldn't recommend it. It would be a thumbs down. It is a misfire. The basic setup for this movie is good, like a killer in a sting operation at a concert or whatever to where we know he's the killer, and he has to try to escape or, you know, uh, that that's a good Hitchcock-type setup for a plot. Like, for this movie to work, what it should have been is, like, the whole movie should have been at the concert with him, like, trying to escape the concert without his daughter finding out while he's, like, going around or whatever in, in, in clever ways, trying to, like, see what the FBI is doing and all that in more believable ways and everything and make it more entertaining. Maybe he, like, kills people here and there, you know, like, uh, because he has to in certain situations in order to, like, steal outfits and stuff like that. And maybe the certain bodies are found at times. Um... And that, like, prevents his escape at certain points. And then at the end, he might think he's getting away or whatever and all that. And then he gets, like, shot down at the end. That would be the more logical way to do this movie. And that would work better, honestly. Um, that would have that would be better. That would have been the logical way to do it. And it would have been better. As it is, this is this is a misfire by M. Night Shyamalan. Which is a shame because the setup's good. And Josh Hartnett is a... He is... He, does, he is well acted here for what he's supposed to be. But like I said, he's still over the top. Um... It is a good performance. I wouldn't say great, but it is good. Um, and this movie could have worked. Uh, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you again.